Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays for part two of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 summary update. And we talked a little bit last time about how we've gone off doing various archaeological nonsense and how there's a few things here and there that we're running a little bit short of. The first one we're going to take a look at is the Immer site, and we've talked about this before quite a bit, and, because, and it's still a sort of a, well, I don't want to say it's a problem, because I think think it might sort of be just about maybe kind of almost hanging on maybe. It's one of those that we're, keep, we're sort of still monitoring because it's kind of hard to tell whether we're just filling up buffers or whether we do actually still have a bit of a shortage of it. But as you can see a ship has come in and it's, unlo it's well it's finished unloading now and we're just pu pulling through all of the nonsense out of the uh, out of these uh, warehouses down here. There's still a decent amount of immersite and immersion plate coming out of here uh, and that's being passed up here and if we look in here we can see that yeah we have a decent amount of immersite available. Uh, the question is is this going to be enough to last us until the next spaceship comes out? And there have been a few uh, issues around this. One is whether we're bringing in the uh, rare metals fast enough. And you can see this is all getting chucked straight into the spaceship. And now we've run out and we don't have enough. Because making Immersite is ridiculously heavy on the rare metals. Uh, so if we look over here, we'll see that, well, there'll be a train coming up here sooner or later. It's not on its way up yet. But there's going to be a train coming up from over here. And this is the one that gets fed from this additional rare metal train that I put in over here. And you can see that's flowing very, very freely there. And pouring it all down into a train down here. Now I noticed Tristan has come along and he's fiddled with things a little bit here. So he's just got the rare metal going into the top, into the front wagon, and then he's got everything else going into the back wagon. So I suspect this is the two of us having a little bit of a squabble over how much of what goes into it should be rare metal and how much should be other things. And now because he's done that, this might be why we're not getting enough rare metal being brought up to the space station and being being put onto the spaceships, because now it's just trying to fill up with, um, well, with other things. At the moment there's a huge amount of methane ice going in, and it looks like there's some holmium cables going in, but I can't really see them because the belt's running too quickly. This is, this is going to fill this train up I reckon I don't think we're going to have any problems with that um, but the fact that he split that off to only go into one of the wagons is a bit of a concern for me and that means that yeah we've not we're not actually bringing all that much rare metal up because we've no longer got the buffer in down here to, to load it in more quickly and so we're just we're just straight up not putting passing as much through so yeah Tristan has successfully broken the Immersite production thanks for that um, I guess I'll just have to come down and either put it back to the way it was before which had one of these loaders in there um, pointing in, in the inwards direction and so it would load this this chest here up with large quantities of, of rare metal which would then pour out here and that that did mean admittedly that two-thirds of what was going into the train would then end up being rare metal which is perhaps a little bit unfair and is presumably why there seemed to be a bit of a shortage of other things however there is now a problem there is now an insufficiency of the rare metal so we're gonna have to do something about that that might just be put in another train like I did for the sulfur so we have a train that just brings up rare metal up to that station um, it's an extra thing to have to add in and which is why I was hoping that this one would be sufficient but as you can see when this train turns up here with a smidge of rare metal on it like that which is probably which is all well mostly already been unloaded there's only another 500 in here that's not going to satisfy a spaceship which is coming over and asking for about 60,000 at a time that said the spaceship has left so it has managed to find enough rare metal so it's kind of hanging on by its fingernails at the moment I feel it's, it's not really good enough but it's it sort of is just about kind of maybe almost sort of coping not sure I approve I think some other fiddling here is going to be required the other concern with this is still going to be whether this train that comes in here that takes the plates and the crystals away to wherever they're needed, whether that is going to have enough capacity to keep the rest of the system satisfied. And here's the train, it's come back in now. Apparently we have enough, wherever it went, had enough of the uh, of the plates and is now loading up with crystals, uh, is now reloading with crystals. So I think we should probably put in a third train over here and have, and, and like we've done with the Naquium, um, over here have a one train for the in this case it's ingots and, and crystals over here it would be one train for plates and then another one for crystals I think that would help quite a lot it would double the amount that gets passed through because each time this train goes through it's only taking well okay it's taking 60% of a train of crystals through and that's probably not going to be enough to, to completely satisfy whatever wherever it went to which is why it came back completely empty and has immediately left again to go to well I don't know Wherever it's going to, oh yes, it's still trying. It's still trying to fill up the um, the material science production because we need enormous quantities of immersite crystals over here in order to make all of these um, material testing packs. Although that's actually that said, this is filling up. We've now got the belts are full all the way back down to here, uh, and so we've, and we've got a little bit left on the belts along here. So I think actually. Despite all of my doom and gloom around the Emma side, I think we might finally have more or less filled this area up. So you can see we've got that 60% of a train being unloaded into the uh, into the warehouse over here. It can then flow off down here. And I'm cautiously optimistic that as it flows in over here, we're going to get to the point where this is 
where these belts more or less fill up. I do notice that we seem to have a shortage of plastic over here though, so that's going to be another thing to look into uh, uh, later. Although, let's see down here, oh okay, a train of plastic has just arrived, so that's being topped up. It's probably again because we've just been making so many of these things, because suddenly we've got Immersite available, that it's putting a massive load on all of the other supplies, and plastic is the one that we're struggling most. But it hasn't, plastic hasn't run out, and as you can see here, it is now caught up and is topping up these belts along here. So, things are mostly okay. You can see the Immersite flowing in along here. None of these machines are grabbing it because they've all got enough. They've filled up their own internal buffers. And so it's just filling up the belt down to about here. And now it's backed up and, well, okay, this one's backing up as well. But now it's basically backed up and we're getting to the point where we actually have enough Immersite crystals. So, yeah, things are actually looking, they are looking significantly better than I was expecting them to look, should we say. Uh, I think this is this this load that's just being unloaded now is going to be enough to make is going to be enough to fill up the the material science area over here completely, uh, and it's just going to back up along here. Now we'll notice it's empty the station, but that means we only need one more train load, maybe two more train loads, to fill up the warehouse and this bit of belt, and then this system can stop requesting crystals all the time, and therefore we're going to then be able to start taking crystals off to anywhere else they're needed. We have a lot of crystals at the moment, and so I think we might be going to be okay. It's going to take a little while for it to all rattle through and for everything to look like it's completely satiated, but I think we might be in a good position right now. The Graphomatrons don't entirely agree. You can see here that we've actually used, in the last hour, we've used more Immersite Crystal than we've created, uh, which is always a concern, and but, however, the plate seems to be okay. We've, we've been producing 1.7 thousand per minute and only using 1.3 thousand per minute, so that seems to be all right. Uh, we're getting these spikes in here as the trains, as, as, as ships came in and trains unloaded, I suspect, uh, but you notice they're getting smaller. I, I think things might be okay, although I'm a little bit concerned that we don't seem to be making Immersite Crystal at the moment. Maybe that's because the space ship's full? Or, no, that'll be because we think we've got enough over here, and so we've stopped producing it. Maybe that means the numbers are wrong, we need more spaceships. I don't know, it's well, more buffers somewhere. Uh, some further thought is required on this system, I think. As part of fixing up all of the uh, the, the Immersite issues we've been having around here, we noticed that when there was no Immersite, and when there was nothing being fed through over here, this train was running constantly because it just had a, um, a delay down. It just had a five seconds of inactivity and then leave down here. So Mike has now put in a circuit condition that is watching for blob is greater than zero. What does that mean? Ah, that is watching for when these belts, basically for how full these belts are. So over here you can see there's various signals coming in and we've got a blob of one. Uh, and when anything is greater than two outputs one blob okay so so it's watching so basically this is watching for there being anything on the belt and the train being inactive and if that is the case it means the train has filled up and therefore it's time for it to leave the possible downside here is if we run out of rare metal the train might not be filling up with anything because there might not be anything being brought in and the train might not be full and therefore it would never leave so that's potentially a problem However, I think we're bringing in rare metal through enough quantity, large enough quantity that shouldn't matter. What he really needs is to be receiving a signal down here from down the elevator that says whether there's any rare metals in orbit. And basically, if the train down here is idle and there are rare metals up in orbit, and potentially if this isn't full, then the train should go and get some more rare metals. Uh, but that has, but the system hasn't quite been finished over here, so it's a it's a partial success. It's a step in the right direction because the trains won't run when the system goes to sleep, but they also won't run if the system has broken because there isn't any rare metal down on the ground because it's all up in, in orbit. Partial success, I'd say we call that. Over on Agnea, as well as uh, Mike going around and dealing with the pyramid over here, I've come out here and I've put in an additional oil mine up here because this, this one seemed like a really easy one to grab because it's right on the rail system over here. So the, the, the train line ran right through the middle of the oil patch, but uh, conveniently not over any of the oil actual oil patches. So I was able to just put in all of these uh, drills over here, start drilling it up, pump it over into the station over here, and we now, as you can see, we have a completely full. Well, I say completely full. It's as full as Factorio Fluid Physics will let it get. We'll call it a completely full oil station over here. So the trains can come can now come over here. This station will be active. The train trains are now welcome to come over here whenever they need oil. And that oil is brought over then to here, where it is turned into sulfur for all the processing, and also into I don't know, we use it, I'm sure we use it for something else, but I can't remember exactly what it is. We use enormous quantities of sulphur in order to do all of the uh, the vulcanite processing over here. And so we need to make sure this is this stays active. And we do have another oil mine down here, but you can see this one's down to 69,000, this one's down to 407. This was at, between them, they were at 500,000 last when I looked during the last stream. So since then, we've used a good 40,000 oil out of this. So it's not actually crisis level yet. We could probably get through, away with a few more streams before it actually runs out. However, I don't want it to break and run out because 
of vulcanite is quite important. And so this station down here is much closer to where the oil train up here comes, comes from. So it'll, it'll come down here as a preference. It'll use up this station, and then once that one is completely drained, then it'll come over here and start grabbing the oil from up here. And so that system's going to work really, really nicely. We've got another 3 million up here, so that's going to last us a very, very long time. I think we shouldn't have any issues with oil, for, for a good, for, probably for the entire rest of the stream, and no matter how much vulcanite we, uh, we, we manage to rip through. And as you can see at the moment over here, we've got the, the system that produces vulcanite from um, from core fragments is running nicely. This is producing over here. We've got actually we've got a certain amount of enriched vulcanite coming out as well, which probably means we've got yeah approximately no actual vulcanite cubes coming out of the bottom here. This is approximately none. It's very very little. However, we have a decent amount of vulcanite over in uh, in Norbit, and so we're not letting through the vulcanite that's being produced from the mine systems because we don't need to. So these ones up here are all stalled and stopped at the moment. For some reason, there's no no trains in here. Oh, I guess it's probably because these are, yeah, we've got train limits of zero because all these stations are sufficiently full. So yeah, none of these systems along here are running because simply because they don't need to. We've got in just about enough vulcanite at the moment uh, that the trickle that's coming through from here is enough at the moment. And once we top up with the enriched vulcanite, then we'll bring a lot more vulcanite through. This system will, will all work quite nicely over here. We can see at the moment we are actually asking for 15,000 enriched vulcanite. So it's going to take a while for that to uh, for us to get that 15,000 through here. But it will eventually happen. We'll get there in the end. And then, as I say, we'll switch over to producing uh, normal vulcanite until this gets to less than zero, which will mean another 36,000 vulcanite through there. So there is a lot of demand. However, the demand is not to an extent where we have any kind of problems, which is why none of these other systems over here have kicked in. You see, this one kicks in when there's when there's a shortage, a shortage of more than 50,000. These ones will kick in when again when there's a shortage of more. 50,000. And so we have, yeah, we have the prioritization of the various different supplies here. And it works quite nicely, I'd say. We're, as you can see, we're filling, and then the train is filling up. And it'll bring that up to orbit to take off to an orbit. So you've, you've seen how all of this system works before. The only other thing to report over here is that I put in a lot more meteor defense guns because you'll, you'll remember a, a few weeks ago we had a couple of meteors hit um, Agnair and do a little bit of damage to one of the rails and I don't want that to happen again. So I've gone from four guns before to 31 guns now and I'm cautiously optimistic that that might be enough. Over on Njord, the Holmian planet, Tristan has been being destructive. You'll notice by all these substations, random pylons and a few sort of empty belts and things around here, that there used to be some stuff in here. And this was the original Holmian processing facility, which was old tech. We've upgraded quite a lot since then. And so Tristan's pulled all of that up and then moved down over here. This, this is the, uh, the newer system, which as you can see is using things like advanced furnaces and advanced chemical plants. And okay, so we're still using pulverizers because there isn't an advanced pulverizer. And so he's been try also been trying to upgrade these to higher tier productivity module. So you see, you managed to do these ones up to up to tier six, and they're the first ones on the belt, so they're a good good place to start. Uh, and then all these ones down here, they're still tier three because, well, apparently we don't have enough vitalic reagent for him to make all of the uh, all the modules he's going to need for all of these. Um, I do note that just given the sheer number of these. Um, he, it would be a lot, lot cheaper to come in over here, put in some better beacons. So maybe if he comes down, uh, comes over to here and then comes through with the wide area beacon twos, these could be run down the middle of here with some underground belts for these belts, that's fine. But he could put them in along here and this will save on a lot of high tier modules part, for many reasons. Partly because the high tier beacons cover a much larger area. As you can see, this one is probably covering about the same as those four. And so each module you put into the beacon will affect more machines. Therefore, you get more effect from each module and therefore you need fewer modules modules. Also, because you can affect each building with far more modules, you'll get these machines running much, much faster, which means you need far fewer pulverizers to get the same level of throughput, which means you don't need as many of the high tier productivity modules that you put into the pulverizers. And so I wouldn't be surprised if just this area that we've got on screen at the moment was able to replace all of this all the way down here. Uh, but that's up to Tristan to do the maths for. Um, I think it will, make, it will make the whole system much, much smaller, much more compact, much more efficient and much, much faster just by dropping in a massively upgraded beacon over here and then sorting out everything around it. Now, he's already done that over here. He's got a, a wide area beacon here. It's affecting all of these machines. So he's, he's, he is fully aware of this thing. He just hasn't finished the upgrades yet. This is very much a, uh, a work in progress, I think, because as, as we discussed, he's run out of the, uh, the modules he needs for these, what, these machines and may well be struggling for all the other parts. Let's have a look at what he says in his notes. Okay, he's not mentioned upgrading this area, but I'm going to assume that that's probably going to be the next thing on his to-do list because it is an obvious way of getting a lot more throughput out of a, a lot fewer machines and therefore not having to wait quite as long for all of the other uh, modules to arrive. That said, if we look over here, you can see that this system is running 
quickly enough. This is producing enough crushed Holman um, Holmanites to keep all of these machines satisfied. And so I guess maybe we need more machines down here. Is there any sort of input shortages over here? There is an output jam of dirty Holmium water. So the current problem is that he needs a lot more of the, uh, the washing going on up here. And it looks like the limiting factor here is the speed of this belt that's bringing out the uh, the junk that's coming out of the from the um, from 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 the uh, cleaning recipes running. So over here you can see the outputs are full and the input is full. It's just generally it. Th this is struggling. This 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 is this is going to be the next thing it's going to need some work in order to bring it up to speed. And then possibly more core mining, more, I, I don't know. Whether he's then going to be able to do more core mining in order to keep a greater proportion of the input Holmanite resource over here coming from core mining or not, well, um, is it, no, it looks like he's already got in fact, it looks like he's actually got every single core seam on this planet, and between them, they're just not bringing enough through. Looking at a distant one up here, okay, they're, they're actually this is this is jammed. Well, it's not quite jammed up, but there is a train that can't go to a dest can't go to its destination here. Over here, yeah, again, not jammed up. What about this one? It looks like all of the Holmium uh, core chunks that are being produced are being used up. It's just that the planet is a very small one, and we have a very high demand for uh, for the Holmium, and so the amount the, the rate it's coming through at. It's apparently just straight up not enough. Um, maybe he needs another prioritization place for these trains to go to, but given that none of the stations were full, I think it's actually okay. The only problem the only problem is that we're just not bringing this stuff in fast enough. Fortunately, there's a top-up coming in from the mines here, and you can see this dribbling through slowly. And so that is able to keep these systems running. However, as also previously discussed, the outputs are... Um, we're, not, we're not cleaning up the dirty Holmium water quickly enough, and that seems to be the limiting factor over here. Over the last hour, the Holmium production has been seesawing wildly, which is um, interesting. Producing about 350 a minute, but we're trying to, we're using 473 a minute, and we'd probably be using more if there was more of it available. So I'd say, unfortunately, this is another area where we need, we just need more, more throughput over here. And Tristan is working on that. As I say, he did a load of work on this in the last stream. Progress is being made. We'll hopefully get there fairly soon. Out on Kothar, Mike has been having a fairly frustrating time. Uh, we talked last week about um, how we'd, he'd increased the the, uh, the supply of nitric acid, and then suddenly that meant that the hydrogen chloride, and there wasn't enough hydrogen chloride. So he came out at the beginning of the stream, he's increased the supply of hydrogen chloride further by putting in, yep, you can see there's more belts, there's a second crusher down here, another beacon down here, so all of this is now running faster, we've got plenty of sand coming through, and so he's increased the production of um, the hydrogen chloride, and so that seemed to be okay, and then, and then that caused him to discover that the nitric acid production was too slow again. So he's gone out and he's buffed that one again. Uh, and that's being produced over here. So this is now, yeah, there's now a lot more machines over here than there were last week. This is running much, much faster. And so that has meant that now we, now we, now there's a problem with the hydrogen chloride again. So he's been sort of going back and forth between those two. And I guess the, the increases he's been putting in have been insufficient. However, those increases have produced a noticeably larger amount of iridium being produced. If you, if we look back over 10 hours, you can see there's been a quite a spectacular increase going along here. This will be the last three or four streams. So there was last week's improvements here, then some, a little bit this, at the beginning of this week, and then a bigger one of the, uh, this week. So he's now producing, uh, if we look again over the last hour, he's been producing 841 per minute and that's been very, very steady. The, uh, okay, the graph, the line's not perfectly smooth, but you don't, you don't get that. It's not, it is not, that, that is what I would call a steady, steady production. And we're using 825 per minute. So we are, we are producing it slightly quicker than we're using it. However, consumption is quite spiky. And if we look at the graph over on Norvis, you can see that we currently have no iridium available up in space. So I think he might be there. We might be at the, at the stage where we're just filling up buffers now and things are basically largely okay. For example, if we take a look over here in the area where all the iridium intermediates are made, this station looks pretty healthy. It's got 1,800 iridium ingots in it. It is oh, it is currently asking for a two trains. So at the moment, the station has some in it. So we've got we've got to the point where we've filled up. We've got some over here at least. And looking over here, the heavy composites are still flowing. However, this station nearly full. That's that's very very nearly full. This is going to fill up the uh, the warehouse, then back up along here quite soon, and that will reduce the amount of iridium we're getting through. The uh, heavy bearings completely full. The machinery has stopped working. Uh, has stopped has stopped running rather. Up here, the heavy assemblies, again, backed up, stopped running. The iridium uh, girders, also backed up, stopped running. So, things are looking really promising over here. There's pro I reckon there's enough iridium over in this station here to completely fill up this, this heavy composites box uh, and, 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 and then run the buffer back up to here. So, at that point, it's just going to be filling up this station and then filling up the iridium drop station here and, of course, the train that, uh, that, get, that gets filled up from it. And then we can start to fill up all the warehouses up here in the storage area in the, in the spaceport. And then we can fill up all of the storage down on Kothar. And at that point, 
maybe we'll actually get to the point where it'll start to back up. Who knows? Um, but yes, having having had a look at the uh, Iridium Intermediates down on Norvis and seeing how full all of those warehouses are, I think Mike has cracked it, and we are just at the point of, uh, of filling up buffers now. Now, the system doesn't run at 100%, as you've seen by uh, by, the, by the, all the red lights on some of these machines and the shortages of, um, well, in this case, the hydrogen chloride, as I was saying. But if the system is producing it faster than it's being used, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, I think this is now this is now cracked. This is probably going to ca this is looks like it's in the position where it's catching up. I think everything is going to be okay over here, and we probably don't need to come over and upgrade these to be wide area beacon Mark twos just to get that extra bit of sand and um, and hydrogen chloride out over here. However, if we did want to upgrade it, that would be a quite an easy way to do it, um, although we'd have to ship the parts out here. I should also mention that as part of the upgrades over here, Mike has further expanded the solar array up in Cothorbit to now have an extra two gigawatts of power, which is why it's quite so expansive. And if we look at one of these things, well, you can see over here, we've got we've got 11 and a half gigawatts available. We're using eight and a half, nine-ish. You can see why he needed to bump it up, but you can also see that it is clearly working. Um, yeah, so about two hours ago, there was a sudden spike in the amount of power that was required from about you know, maybe six Six gigawatts to about eight to about nine gigawatts so yeah the uh, I think putting in more solar was the right thing to do I've mentioned quite a few times in the uh, in the last few videos that we're having a lot of trouble with a vitalic reagent and that's well I was going to say that's being produced over here it's um, clearly not as you can see um, because over here it well there's but there's a shortage of something what do we should we're short of glass so uh, Mark has been trying to produce, bring enormous quantities of glass over to Bigrid in order to make the uh, in order to make that and it looks like that's just needed for the bottles so it's a shame we can't just chuck this in barrels like everything else because steel seems to be something we have a decent supply um, or maybe just to transport it in fluid tanks that would also work quite nicely but unfortunately no you need to put it in the little glass bottle so you require a supply of glass to be coming in here and that is that is being a big struggle Mark has re increased his uh, requests for supplies of glass. However, unfortunately, it seems that um, that train that I talked about earlier that was bringing the rare metals up for Taras and bringing a lot of other stuff up as well also needs to bring massive, massive quantities of glass through to keep this area happy. We have a request for about 40,000 glass coming in from Big Red, And on this ship, we have, well, there's th th that looks like about 25,000 there. So... Yes, there is some being brought in, but no, no, that's nowhere near enough for uh, what we need for Big Red. So yes, we get, it looks like not only are we going to need to add in a rare metal train to bring that up at a much higher rate, we're also probably going to need to add in a glass train, because if this ship is going to turn up and say, hello, I would like 40,000 glass, uh, that's that's a lot. So if I sort, sort this warehouse, um, okay, it's 2,000 per row, that means 10,000 per wagon, per space wagon specifically. 20,000 per train, so it's going to take two full trains of glass to bring up enough for this spaceship to be satisfied and ready to leave. So, yeah, okay, here, here, here comes a, a little bit of glass now, but that's that's not going to be enough, is it? That, that, that's pathetic. Uh, okay, there's quite a bit more on the belt over here, and, and some rare metal as well, but yeah, you, you see what I mean? It's, it's not enough. I think we're going to need another train that just brings in a solid supply of glass up from uh, up from the ground, like we've done with the sulfur, and, and, and uh, I, I want to do with the rare metals. And then, I think we'll have enough glass over here, and then we can have enough rare metal which means we're going to have enough to carry on doing the Naquium processing, which is really hungry. We're going to have enough to do the biological science production, which is, again, really uh, vitalic reagent hungry. And maybe even enough to do all of the production of those lovely tier 6 productivity modules that we're ripping through in such huge quantities. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing to be struggling on. It, it, it Again, it, there's, no, there's not going to be any shortage of glass down on the ground. Glass is really easy to make. And as you can see down here, glass production is not a problem. We've got we've got as much of it as we want over here. This is purely a logistics issue because we're not able to bring the glass from here up in up to the spaceship fast enough. So we just need to put in an additional train that goes from the ground up to space to take the glass up there. And then I think should, things should be okay. And here we can see that coronal mass ejection uh, striking Taishakuten once again. And uh, this time it's managed to land right in the middle of some of the um, some of the greenhouses that were producing the wood for the free power system. It's doing uh, a reasonably destructive job at uh, clearing up around here. Uh, this isn't an area, as, I, as I'm saying, this isn't an area that we need any, uh, remotely anymore. Uh, so in a way, this is kind of, could be seen as a, a tidying up a little bit for us. Uh, but it's doing it in a fairly destructive manner. It's exciting to watch anyway, though, so uh, let's keep, let, yeah, let's keep an eye on that. I think that's the only one that's land, done landfall in a populated area. Yes, those the other two are way up there, out of the way, and in, 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 in safe areas that we don't care about. But down here, yeah, it's it, it's doing a bit of damage, uh, blowing up some of the machines. Uh, things are actually looking fairly tough. I'm surprised it's not doing a lot more damage than than we're seeing at the moment. Um, it's being quite destructive, yes, but it's it's not absolutely ripping through stuff quite the way I expected it to. Uh, but yeah, that's good fun to watch, isn't it? Uh, 
<laughs> I'm glad it's ha it's landed in a place we don't care about. There, um, and but then of course it wouldn't land in a place that we do care about because we've got umbrella defenses absolutely everywhere else. It's still, um, yeah, interesting though. Tristan has decided it would be fun to have trains being automatically loaded with all the bits and pieces they need in their in their inventories. And this is the uh, the the power, the extra motors, the batteries, and the power absorption things. And so he set up a system along here of equipment gantries. And I was sort of hoping when I heard about equipment gantries, I was kind of hoping they would be a thing that a train would drive in, it would park underneath, and then the uh, equipment gantry would load stuff into it. No, it turns out that's not how they work. Instead, you take your locomotive and you pass it into the machine and then it puts in the motor, then you pass it onto another machine, it puts in another motor and so on 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 all the way up here like this until it gets to this point where we don't have enough batteries apparently. Um, <laughs> but in theory, it'll get passed up when all, all the things will get put into it and then eventually it'll get dropped into a box at the top here. This is an interesting system uh, and it's a bit, it turns out it's a bit fiddly to set up You've got because you've got three different storage areas on here. You've got the first one on the left, which is the equipment gantry equipment item input. And so this is where you put things like batteries that you want to put in into the train. Then it's got the equipment gantry grid item input, which is where you put the locomotive in order that you want to have loaded into it. And then that gets moved up to up here, the equipment gantry grid item output, where it can then be taken out by another inserter and put into and passed off to wherever. So you can see down here, we've got all these locomotives in, they're getting passed up along here, and they've so far they've got to this point where this this machine here is now waiting for um oh no, no this is waiting for a this is waiting for an energy grabbery thingy to arrive and that'll be put onto the onto the belt here be grabbed by this machine except it won't be because we've got a long inserter here and so that's trying to grab from below the chest so this isn't going this isn't ever going to work uh, that needs to be a, either a bigger box or the whole thing needs to be redesigned we'll, we'll just put in a blue chest there with the um, with the energy absorbers in it uh, but anyway in theory they will then get put into the locomotive which will then get carry on get passed up here to get its batteries put in and dropped into the space at the top now the reason there's so many machines here and they're in, in, in quite a careful order is because the trains require lots and lots of things to be put in and each of these equipment gantries will only put one item into the locomotive so we need to have eight of them to put in all of the advanced electric engines we want then we need to have one of them to put in an energy absorber and then three to put in the batteries and it has to be in more or less that order you can't put in these things first because if you do it will put them across bop 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 across the top like that and then you won't have room for all of the motors in there so you need to put the motors in first because they're big and then you can put these things in afterwards because they're smaller uh, and so this is close to working and when it when it when once it does we'll then be able to start making locomotives from here i assume and that means that any new trains we build will be pre-placed with all the bits and pieces in them already and we won't have to have these sort of systems where we load up all the part all the bits and pieces that go into the into the trains and get them and get them set up with it with um, everything we want them to be holding in the meantime he's also added in this little uh, outpost area down here. This is for trains that have been brought down from space. So they can come down the elevator, whip through here, and then drop onto the bottom rail along here and go into this station over here, which is called train boosting. So the train pulls in here. It can then be loaded up with all the bits and pieces. As you've seen how this system works before, it'll be loaded up with all the bits and pieces you need for the, for the, uh, for the train to go faster. And then it can be released to go back up the elevator and go back to normal and carry on with the things it normally does. Now, I believe all the trains that come down the elevator have already been upgraded like this. So if we look at this one, for example, you can see it's got everything in there already. This one here has got everything in there already. But lots of the trains up in orbit, particularly ones that don't need to go to the ground like this one, haven't been upgraded yet. So this is this with this system I could I could go and I could fiddle the schedule here I could put in a uh, I could tell it to go to Norvis down then I could tell it to go to boosting and wait for an arbitrary amount of time it then requires a, a manual intervention to load the um, to load all the stuff into it and then it could then be sent back up here and carry on as normal so we've got we've got the facility to do that so far I believe the only extra train that's been through that for of the ones that stay up in Norvis is the one that carries the uh, Naquium ingots around because they're really because they're, they're so they're so chunky that you only get 10 per slot so you don't get very many into a train and therefore having the train rattling backwards and forwards a bit more quickly seemed like a very good idea so this one has been upgraded and as such has now been able to rip through all of the available naquium which is um slightly unfortunate but you know i talked about yesterday about how we're going to be how we need more of it and what we're going to do there and mo mostly it's just going to be panic uh, so we, uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, but that how that one has been upgraded and so that brings us to the end of the video Thank you very much for watching. As you've probably noticed, things have been a little bit quieter than normal on the channel over the last week. Uh, that's because I'm away on holiday, so there's been no streams and the videos have been coming out at a, a somewhat reduced rate, shall we say. There will be an additional bonus video on Thursday of this week, followed by the third and final part of this catch-up video on next Sunday. So keep an eye out for that, and then normal service will be resumed the Monday after that. That's April the 15th, when everything will be returning to normal. There'll be a stream that night, and then all the, all the usual videos you expect coming out after that. 
So, thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss my glorious return. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.